What's up everybody, Alex here, and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week we are starting with Heartless Trolls, because Heartless Trolls has been one of those tried and true meta builds for the last few weeks. They've dodged, they've dodged nerfs, they've dodged everything, and they've just been consistent. The only nerf on the board actually was, well, Vlad's. Vlad's got nerfed a little bit, but outside of that, this is a fantastic composition. There's a few different options you can go with, alright? So first of all, if you want to have increased damage, you can add Lifesteal. I don't always recommend having Lifesteal up front. If anything, you want to have him on the edge here, and he's going to put the Archer there, and uh, he's less likely to get focused down on the edge. The reason for this is because Lifestealer is one of those units you want him to close a fight. If he gets hit, focus fired down by like, you know, five, six, seven, eight units at a time, then he's going to die rather rapidly. But what you can do is you can put him back here, have Pudge take the initial burst of damage with his blade mail. He's going to help take down some people while sustaining the front line, and he comes in late to clean up. So, it all depends on what your strategy is, and of course, remember, Annie's going to be dropping her little archer up in the front, whatever spot you provide there, so that's going to provide a little bit of an extra little meat shield up front. But anyways, um, if you do want to kind of have more sustain up front, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put the uh, the Abaddon in, position him so that he's close to the Batrider. Uh, that'll help you give you a little bit of a stronger front line and help to keep your guys alive. And once again, late in the game, you can uh, rotate in your Troll Warlord. In terms of alliances, the uh, the Shadow Shelm is the one that come out, but uh, realistically, any one of them can come out. You just uh, you know that you break up some key alliances if you take either one of these out here. Now, just a reminder, if you, th if you see a three-star unit, they're not mandatory in this build. These are just units that have bonus three-star effects, but the major kind of premise of Heartless Trolls is to get uh, as much auto attack damage as you can, an armor reduction there. I do recommend Enthrall and Essex because you do have a ton of ranged units here. Um, and uh, at the end of the day, you're going to get a lot of damage from your trolls. Um, in terms of itemization, I like the idea of running troll uh, items that have a chance to proc more rapidly thanks to the troll bonus. Bear in mind, Skullbasher is a bit of a, a kind of an oxymoron there because Skullbasher has a like two and a half second cooldown that it's not listed on the, the item itself. But, uh, you know, other items like Maelstrom, for instance, for instance, which I don't have here, which I should. Maelstrom would be a great choice here. I do like Silver's Edge. It's fantastic. Uh, it only it, it serves to, like, increase your DPS. The break effect is fantastic as well. Uh, but, like, for instance, Maelstrom is perfect on someone like Shadow Shaman if you don't want to go Octarine. I like Octarine, too, because Octarine tends to have multiple Serpent Wards being cast in any given fight. But at the end of the day, Maelstrom is an excellent item for Shadow Shaman as well. And this is a top meta build. You're going to find success with it. Now, sometimes you've got to find balance. And that is what this build is all about. This build's about taking kind of the best of multiple alliances, synergizing them together, and getting what is overall a very strong composition. What this is, is it's three assassins, three mages, three warriors, three spirits, and three voids. Yes, it requires 10. And what you're likely going to find is that you're going to complete the voids late with someone like uh, Faceless Void. You know, you could also run Enigma early as well, but you're going to kind of have to run with what RNG gives you. But uh, you do want to level aggressively here. You do want Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light's one of your victory conditions. You're running the Spirits in the early game to kind of help you ramp up a little bit. Um, I do recommend the Blink Dagger on Ember Spirit, not a Battle Fury in this build. You could run them with a Battle Fury as well. However, with, a blink, uh, with the Blink Dagger, it's going to help sustain you in the early game because you're going to get uh, much more effective delta slams because uh, ember spirit otherwise has to be positioned up front in order to delta slam in time with the others but overall this is a build about kind of taking a bunch of different units synergizing them together very well uh, you know you get in the three star tiny effect he's very tanky uh, morphling over crystal made in this build yes i know that you lose your human bonus but that Listen, that mana is overrated. The four mana per second is overrated. These mages, uh, sorry, the spirits tend to generate mana on the damage they're taking, and then delta slamming, and then we, then you're just waiting for cooldowns at that point. So don't worry about the mana per second there. I've been running Morphling because straight up Morphling just does more damage over time. Waveform is uh, he's he's tends to survive longer than most units, right? Uh, he can end up being the one of those units that is fighting alongside uh, Storm Spirit to close out a round to get you the win. Uh, you know, Earth Spirit's an absolute must include. You are running four spirits here just to ensure that you're uh, activating Delta Slams whenever possible. Uh, I do like the idea of running Faceless Void, Chrono Cube them, and they will take damage through the Delta Slams. And of course, uh, you know, Templar Assassin is just good because it activates your Void Alliance and your Assassin Alliance. It's a bit of a greedy build, but it's one of those builds like, I mean, you, you don't, like, Assassins is the one that you don't really need to complete right away. Uh, but uh, you're definitely going after Spirits. And of course, you don't even need the Warriors, really. 
Of course, this is the ideal situation. You're going to have to run with what RNG gives you. I like to design builds for 9, but in this circumstance, it was worth kind of mentioning that this would be the complete build at 10. Now here, Scythe of the Vise is a great fill-in for the Void Stone, by the way. Uh, it helps uh, with Keeper of the Light. If you're against Pudges, which is relatively common now because of the effectiveness of Heartless Trolls, what you're going to want to do is you're going to run and rotate them a bit. Even if you have to put the Keeper up a little bit, you're going to want to make sure that he's protected. Bait, bait you know, one of these two, more, uh, either Morphling or Storm Spirit. If they get pulled, they just you know ball lightning away or waveform away and it's not a big deal you have to be aware listen at the end of the day protect your hobgen and protect your keeper they're two of your primary win conditions here um, because friendly fire with the mage bonus does tend to do a lot of damage Surprise, surprise, demons are still part of this meta, and if you're able to three-star warlock relatively uh, early, you might put yourself in a situation to absolutely begin steamrolling with what might be one of the most powerful builds if you're able to activate that three-star uh, three warlock early. If you don't, you're kind of in for a bad time. But there's a few key things here. First of all, Doom has recently been buffed. You're going to see 15 natural, 15 natural uh, armor on, on par with Axe. Right, you're seeing an increased attack rate of now at uh, he's at points, uh, sorry, 0.91 up from I think it was 0.79 or something like that. So, anyways, it's been increased. He attacks faster, he has higher DPS, way more armor. He's a beast now. Not to mention that Doom itself is borderline game breaking because if it, if it hits like a lone druid or something like that unbelievable right you you basically won that fight there's a few units here that you need to be in mind of so oh terribly was changed as well so he's going to be casting uh, relatively uh so he uh, his cast uh, lasts five seconds cooldown six seconds what that means is that he's going to be activating his drew uh not drew his demon bonus over and over again he didn't do that before so he actually got buffed pretty interesting uh i do recommend a circlet of restool on ogre magi he's always bloodlusting and he attacks so damn fast he turns into a DPS machine, an absolute DPS machine. Um, so anyways, this is a fantastic build. I do recommend Voidstone early simply so that uh, you can uh, you can activate the Shadow Demon. Otherwise, you might be in a situation where you want to put Shadow Demon up front, but with a Voidstone, he'll generate enough mana, he'll be okay. Kea is also a great item for Queen of Pain, but uh, you can also give her something like a Chrysalis to activate Crit Chance, uh, you know, any item like that. You know, it's... Again, in the demon build, it's about, uh, it's about auto attack damage. So K is good if you want, but realistically, something like a Chrysalis will even be better for her. Obviously, a Moon Shard as well. But Moon Shards have to go on these two. Terrorblade and Shadow Fiend, uh, they're absolutely ridiculous. Shadow Fiend's damage output can be extremely potent. He has a fast attack rate as it is, and with those uh, with that demon bonus, he can just he, he hits hard. I'm always constantly surprised with how hard the Shadow Fiend hits. Overall, an absolutely fantastic build. Just be aware you're probably going to have to open fort. Be very aggressive around level 3 and 4 with your rerolls in order to pull those uh, those Warlocks. A few minutes ago, I joked about how humans were kind of useless and we didn't need Crystal Maiden. Well, I take that back for this build and this build only because I have been testing a build for Arc Wardens and I've determined that this might be the best one, and I'll tell you why. So first of all, Bloodbound Cap stuff works great. It's a lot of fun. But this one here, I've come to discover that Maelstrom might low-key be the absolute most broken item on Arc Warden. That is realistically attainable, right? Obviously, if you get the Thunderhides and the Aegises and stuff like that, that's pretty fun too. But in terms of straight-up DPS potential, Maelstrom, and I'll tell you why. You're running four trolls, right? So you're increasing the attack speed by 30. Maelstrom has a proc chance of 25%. Okay, as you replicate your Arc Wardens, you're increased, like, each one of them has a 25% chance of doing a base 150 damage proc on four targets, right? Obviously, it jumps and you get reduced, but the, the story, the moral story here is that Maelstrom does not get negatively impacted by the replication of the Arc Wardens, okay? It's one of those items that it just... Listen, your primary damage is not coming from the auto attack of the Arc Warden. It's going to be coming from the proc of Maelstrom. So what you're going to do is you're looking for like a Mango Tree. You want to get Arcane Boots on a Bat Rider because you want to position him here. He's going to activate it right away, uh, which is going to give the cooldown start ticking. He's going to get like two casts of the Arcane Boots. You're going to have multiple Arc Wardens here. I like the Barricades just to protect your Squishies back here because you want Shadow Shaman to cast right away. Because so he can cast again. You want the Paralyzing Cask bouncing around relatively early. And you know what? In this case, the eight mana being generated is pretty significant for these arc wardens so you do want to run these humans crystal maiden uh the omni knight sven and lycan are your four humans forget about the others these are the ones you want and at the end of the day what you're going to see is you're going to see a ton of dps here now of course once again as with all builds if you wish you can take someone out put in the troll warlord late in the game if you wish you can also if you're having a hard time and you have listen this is a lot of mana generation with the mangoes and the, the arcane boots if you're finding it difficult to survive you can take someone like lycan i i don't know if i take lycan out 
you know what? Yeah, you take like an out, and then you're gonna put someone in like Abaddon, probably swap him like this, uh, have him come late. That's fine. You can even do this if you want, uh, or you can even do. Uh, you, you, anyways, do whatever you want. But at the end of the day, Abaddon is a good unit for adding sustain. You do lose some of the human alliance bonus, and uh, you know that that sucks. But you are gaining additional knight and some frontline sustain, which is gonna give your arc warden more time to ground and pound. But realistically, I do like this. The only weakness of this build is that you you are one short from some. You're one short from summoner, so if you do get to 10, you're gonna want to add a summoner in there just to just to finish it if you if you can, because that 40% extra damage is 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 not insignificant. But remember, I'm not too worried about that because the major source of DPS is gonna be the maelstrom, and you're gonna see it. It's gonna be incredible. And where would we be without brawnies? No one's playing brawnies anymore. They're borderline completely uncontested, and the result of that is that you can set up builds like this that absolutely take advantage of brawnies. There's a few things I want to note here. First, in the brawny builds, I do like running multiple beastmasters whenever possible. Put them on the edge so that Wild Axis can hit as many units as possible, amplifying their DPS. I do like the Disruptor in order to lock down those uh, enemy spellcasters. Bristleback should be relatively centered. Uh, listen, low-key, Mantle of the Flay Twins, phenomenal on axe it's one of those synergies a lot of people don't think about but listen calling blade he activates on a unit that has less than 25 percent health he's going to be chasing the, the low health units and just calling blading them it's the perfect item for axe right throw it on him i do like ogre magi in these builds because ogre magi is not as contested as you think he would be and uh, the result of that is that um these are just long sustained fights that's why i like let's go crazy hobgin but uh, these are long sustained fights the bloodlust really matters here because you're going to be really amplifying the amount of damage coming out from your brawnies and of course giving them more opportunities to get kills and snowball further i do like also, also i do like running dragons here if you pull dragon knight you can take out snap or take out Vi viper whatever you wish to do uh, or you can even you know if you're at 10 run both uh, dragon knight is worth it in this build it's kind of like a high roll whatever we got him and he's there and we're at 10 let's throw him in there right but remember, if you don't have a Dragon Knight, you can run a multiple of any of the, you know, the Brawnies themselves. And they're going to get the Brawny benefit, so it's all good. But at the end of the day, Brawnies are not as contested as they used to be, of course, since they're, they're relative nerf. But because these units are barely being used at times, right? I, I shouldn't say that. They're, they're still being used, but not the same way they were earlier in this meta. The result is that you're often able to get these guys. Like Juggernaut, you can probably 3-star borderline every single game bristles not being used very commonly uh, the only one that's really being contested very often is you are seeing the beastmaster being contested in hunter builds and uh, disruptor is a throw in in so many builds because of his static field so anyways guys if you have any questions let me know in the comments i'll be more than happy to help you and i hope that these guys help you rank up in dota underlords thank you so much for watching and a very special thank you to all of my wonderful subscribers take care everyone and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day